Good afternoon, everyone, uh, my dear students. So in my last video, I have discussed about that how we are going to do a polymerase chain reaction, what are the different instrumental setup is required, how the different way uh, or what are the different reagents how efficiently we can do a PCR, uh, how to troubleshoot if uh, your desired PCR product is not coming. So now we have completed our initial video of PCR. Now there are two different ways. Either uh, you are unsuccessful in getting your desired PCR product, or you have successfully uh, got your PCR product. Now, your next aim is to do the cloning of the PCR product. Now, there are several ways by which you can uh, do this um, cloning of PCR product. For example, uh, First of all, uh, though there are several methods have been uh, found in or have been designed by different um, company like Kayagen, in Vitrogen. So I would like to uh, discuss one after another that what are the different ways of my PCR product can be cloned. First one is basically the restriction enzyme related cloning. So what we do exactly, we basically digest the PCR product and actually we use specific plasmid with the same restriction enzyme and we can ligate the PCR product with the plasmid vector. Second thing, second is basically uh, very interesting that is the TA cloning. So the PCR product with actually having uh, overhang A, overhang adenine base can directly be ligated into a topo TA cloning a plasmid that contain a overhang thymine residue. Third interesting uh, cloning strategy is basically that involves the addition of specific DNA sequence that is the topo to the PCR product, enabling the direct insertion of this vector into the vector without the need of any restriction enzyme. Now, in vitrogen has a, has a uh, patented product of combining both this TA and topo, that is the topo TA cloning kit. Fourth uh, important uh, cloning is basically uh, that basically known as the Gibson assembly where the overlaps of the complementary sequences of the PCR product and a, a kind of a linearized vector enable them to assembly in vitro without the use of any restriction in the nucleus. Fourth is the over lapping extension of the PCR, amplifying two separate fragments overhang and allowing them to anneal and create a complete product of that. Now, uh, interesting part is that at what condition uh, we will actually follow, at what condition we will actually uh, follow the topo TA cloning at what condition uh, we actually follow uh, the Gibson assembly cooling? At what condition we will follow the TA cloning? So we, act, I would like to uh, discuss one after another in my uh, next uh, uh, video. So we are actually discussing uh, one of the major important uh, uh, PCR uh, product cloning, that is the TA cloning 
so TA cloning is a very simple but widely used method for the cloning of the PCR product with having an A overhang uh, at the three prime end of the DNA because we know that in a nucleic acid, the DNA, we have a five prime end, we have a three prime end. So five, five, five prime phosphate and three prime hydroxyl group are, have a uh, overhanging adenine uh, residue at the three prime end. Now, what are the specific steps here required? So first of all is basically we need to amplify the PCR. So first step is PCR amplification. So for that, what we actually do in our lab, even in my lab also, I'm doing the same. So what for that, we need to conduct a PCR reaction uh, that already I have discussed in my previous video using a primer that introduce a single adenine residue overhanging at the three prime end of each PCR product. Second interesting part, we need to purify the PCR product. So first, thing that we have to keep in our mind that once we do this, then we have to purify. So purify the PCR product to remove this primer, the nucleotides and the enzymes using the methods called any spin column or gel purification that we can also use. But in my lab, we actually use a uh, 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 gel purification strategy in my lab. Third is the vector preparation because here the vector preparation is very important and most crucial part. So what for that, what we actually use a cloning vector with a thiamine overhang at the both end. If you remember that in my PCR product, we have a A overhang, so that's why the vector that we prepared, so vector should have a T overhang for that because this A and T will actually join together. So that's why, for a cloning vector, we actually use the thymine overhang in the both end. So the plasmid designed in such a way for the TA cloning, they often have a T overhang added to the end of the linearized vectors. Next thing is that now once we have the plasmid, we have the vector, one there is a A overhang, one there's a T overhang. Now we need to ligate. So that's why it's a ligation reaction, the step four. So for that, what we do ethically, mix the purification of the PCR product with the linearized vector, and then we have to use the appropriate ligase. And we know that ligase is basically the class six enzyme as for the enzyme commission number or enzyme classification number. The adenine overhang of the PCR product will actually form a base pair with the thymine overhang of the vector now. Then is basically then is basically the transformation because now we have added this and then we need to actually transform this into the part. So that's why what we generally do basically, we actually introduce this ligated DNA into a competent cell. Now, I hope you all uh, are aware of what is the competent cell because now as we know that the bacteria has a semi parallel membrane. So that's why and also and the surface charge of the bacterial membrane is negative. So that's why easily we cannot introduce the negatively charged DNA into the bacteria because this both negative charge will actually repel with each other, right? So that's why what we do, uh, we actually prepare uh, them or we actually convert them into a competent stage or competent form. And then we can do this using a ice cold calcium chloride treatment that I will discuss in some other video. So that's why we introduce this ligated DNA into the competent cell and typically uh, through the heat shock method. And if the size is very big, then what we can do, we can actually use the uh, electroporation technique. Finally, now once we have successfully transformed, then we have to select this properly. So that's why it's called the selection procedure. So we actually uh, do a plating, a microbiology technique by which we do the plating of the transformed cell on a selected medium that is containing the antibody resistant gene to identify them. And those uh, recombinant plasmid uh, with having the recombinant uh, plasmid, having the uh, drug resistant gene, antibody resistant gene, they will actually form the colony. Though um, in some other video here, I will actually discuss about that. Sometimes what happens, we actually get to select some wrong uh, selection. So that's why 
Uh, another very fruitful technology is basically uh, the blue white screening. Anyway, and the final step is basically the verification. That is basically to confirm the presence of the correctness of whatever the insert that we have used as a gene of interest in the selected colonies through the method like uh, we need to say finally we need to finalize figure out that uh, whether we have successfully uh, cloned it or not and then there is an important uh, 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 experiment that we usually perform nowadays that is the NGS or next generation sequencing so in my sec just second video I will actually di will discuss about uh, the, how we can actually achieve the sequencing uh, uh, in a very uh, uh, easy and cheap way by using the Oxford Nanopore technology. Uh, that is the, um, you know, we also known as it is a pocket sequencer, Oxford Nanopore technology. So as a, as, at, as a GIST, so TA cloning is the advantageous for simplification, the high efficiency and making them suitable for our routine task and routine work and uh, in that case, what we can do, we can achieve the cloning of the PCR product. And after that, we can go successfully any kind of downstream experiment like sequencing and others. Anyway, with this note, uh, I'm concluding that part and we'll move to our next video. Okay.